So this funky philodendron that I have here is called Philodendron Martianum, and this is one of the philodendrons that I had picked up while I was at the Aroid show, but I had a smaller version of this that I picked up from Thailand three years earlier, and I really love this philodendron. It has a little bit more, it's a more epiphytic philodendron, and part of the reason that makes it so cool is if you could see these really fat, chunky petioles. And this is something that I would say, okay, it's actually being accustomed to drying out because it has this succulency um, to the little stems that are coming from, uh, from the, the leaf. And the leaf is actually quite sturdy uh, as far as a philodendron leaf goes. Now, this is a plant that's a little bit more epiphytic, so that means it's kind of growing on something else. It's accustomed to drying out. I have this one a little bit more in the grower's mix, but I am very cautious not to overwater this plant because I found that if you actually have a tendency to overwater this plant, then it'll probably rot off at the base. So giving it a little bit more of a porous mixture, making sure that there could be a little bit more airflow if you don't have that much of a porous mixture to make sure that this plant actually dries out. Now, where am I growing this plant? So I have one plant that's growing under a grow light more in my interior space, the smaller one that's growing more into the interior space um, in my workroom, which is the room that I'm in now. And I have this one growing more in the interior of my space, actually under much further under a, a grow light, but more intense grow light um, in my living room. So I'm, I'm not giving them so different conditions in order to be able to compare, which is typically what I like to do. But I have a feeling because that these are kind of growing a little bit more in the understory that these are growing in a slightly more moderate kind of dappled light conditions, which is what I want to recreate in my home. So it's not like I'm sticking this directly in a window and giving it the best light that it possibly can get. Although I would be curious if you actually are growing this philodendron in your house, what type of lighting conditions are you giving it? Because like I said, I'm not growing it in two various different conditions, um, you know, as far as this plant goes, even though I have two different varieties, but I would love to hear what you're doing because um, growing it indoors, this one's a relatively new one for me, even though I've had the other one growing for a couple of years, it was very, very small to start with. And this one is obviously much more sizable, so I could get a little bit more of an assessment, but I haven't had it for that long of a time. Anyway, um, this one is native to Brazil, so you'd probably find it actually growing in there if it's growing natively, and hopefully you will see more of this actually growing in um, a cultivated plant market so that more people could get their hands on it. Fertilizer, I would say stick to something that's a little bit more like a well-balanced fertilizer on a monthly basis or a bi-weekly basis. So during the growing season, you can maybe do a 20-20-20 or a 10-10-10, that's a synthetic fertilizer, so I'd cut it by half. So if it says like a half a teaspoon per gallon, then you may wanna do more like a quarter teaspoon per gallon. Or if you go the organic route, then a 111, 222. Mind you that they're probably getting some of the nutrients from the rainwater that's coming down. You know, they have this little bit more of a basket shape, so they're probably collecting some of those nutrients. So hitting this up with some micronutrients once in a while is probably going to be a really good thing for this plant. And, um, and most plants, for that matter, because plants do need a little bit more of that, that micronutrients. Now, as far as propagating this, you can probably cut this off at the stem. You'll see that there's like some little root, um, aerial roots that are kind of growing off here, and you could actually do, do that. Or you could, you could um, propagate it by seed. Of course, that will take a much longer time, so actually getting a cutting of this will probably be the way to go. 